How you doing? I'm Liam Cunningham uh, from Game of Thrones, and you're on Cinephilia. Why did you want to become an actor? Um, it's kind of str it's a strange question that because uh, I I used to be I didn't start until very late I was twenty nine when I started acting uh, and I lived in Africa for a few years and I used to be an electrician and when I came back to Ireland I got bored very quickly because I went back to my job I was doing before I left to go to Africa. Uh, so I was looking for a hobby to take my mind off my boring job. And when I, 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 I loved movies, loved drama, loved TV. Uh, and I said, well, I, I'll have a go at that. I was looking for a, uh, for a hobby. But uh, I got the bug. I fell in love with it in a, within a few weeks. And uh, I knew I didn't want to do anything else. And uh, so I had... I had no ambition to be an actor, but I, I, it, it, I, turned, I turned into an actor, basically. It's kind of strange. You always worked with Neil Marshall. Uh, is he a friend, or was it a coincidence you worked uh, with him so many well, times? Well, bef just before I came in here, I just uh, his wife is outside, Axel, who's Belgian. And she has a film here. Um, I know I've done... I did Neil's first movie, and I've done his last movie. I did uh, Dog Soldiers. Uh, which was fantastic fun, and I've also done uh, um, Centurion uh, with Michael Fassbender, uh, which was the last movie that he did. But I've also did uh, one of the best episodes of Game of Thrones that he directed, The Battle of Blackwater. Uh, yeah, we're friends. Yeah, we're, we're, we will be working together in the future. Um, he's a fantastic director, brilliant on horror, and I mean, he's an editor, so he knows how to stretch a scene and, and it, it, you know, for ten, he's brilliant on, on building up tension. Um, and uh, I mean, Dog Soldiers was one of the best first scripts, or first feature scripts I'd ever read. It was hilarious and, and, and clever, and, but real. I think that's one of the reasons it was as good as it was. It wasn't, it wasn't pretending to be an action movie. It was with these idiot soldiers to get in this bizarre story with werewolves. Uh, and I just thought it was so, so different and it was a, a different thing to see uh, that I, I had to be involved in it. And the same with kind of Centurion, which is the, about the Roman invasion, but it's only about ten guys. And I, I just, I, I just like the way his, his view on things. He has a, a strange, he doesn't come like this, he comes from this angle or this angle. And uh, he's, he's very calm and uh, he's fantastic to work with on the set. He's a very calming influence. He's a kind of quiet guy and kind of gets on with it. And, He's, he's great. I love working with him. Uh, you played in uh, War Horse mm -hmm. first by Steven Spielberg. Was it? Uh, did you accept the movie just for uh, playing for Steven Spielberg? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And who, what actor? I don't see yeah. you what? a lot in the movie. <laughs> well, no, I'm not in it very much actually, but it's a, it's an important role. It's a small role, yeah. but important role. Um, when you know when you get a call. Because I never met him, I, I was. Uh, they were told to get somebody on. Uh, he'd seen my work. I know he'd seen my work. But uh, he, uh, went, uh, the first time I kind of met him was on set as we were about to f start filming. It's kind of scary because <laughs> uh, it's so big. You know, his, his, um, he's, he, uh, he has huge budget, and, and I mean that that thing was uh, enormous. I mean, you know, there was he was filming a war. Um, so it was really big, and that, that can be quite kind of intimidating. So you have to be kind of, um, with him, you have to know what you're doing. You, you, you better know what you're doing. Um, and so I'd done a lot of work in preparation, and I'd got some choices for him before I got there. Uh, and he, he, he does try to get the measure of you. So, yeah. so when you get there, he kind of goes, okay, what are you going to be doing? So you better not turn around and go, whatever you tell me t to do. I don't think he wants that answer. He, he wants you to go. So I presented him with a couple of ideas I had, and he went, "Yeah, we'll have that. We'll have that. That's good. We're going to bring you in." He's got his camera moves already set up and all that, but within those parameters, and um, yeah, you can operate. He's he's good. I, I like working with him, but it, it is kind of. I mean, I was you know 11 or 12 years old when I saw Jaws, and then 40 years later, <laughs> I find myself working with him. It's kind of you're going to go. This is really weird. My f if my father had been alive, we would have both laughed about it because I remember going to the cinema with him to, to see Jaws. 
it was really strange then, and then to be on a set, kind of going, I'll go and work on Spring Break now. That's kind of weird. It's kind of cool. And he's, he's, he is an absolute genius. I mean, when you think about it, Close Encounters and E.T. is an extraordinary, extraordinarily beautiful movie. Uh, Close Encounters, magnificent movie. Jaws is brilliant. Duel is his first movie. was really cool. And, uh, you know, he's, 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 he's taken some incredible chances. I mean, he, you know, he's almost responsible for, ma for making the blockbuster. I mean, you know, with all the good and bad that has done the cinema. <laughs> But uh, but it's a you know it's a it's a Steven Spielberg movie when you're when you're in it it's not <laughs> there's nobody else it's a Spielberg movie and you, you, you as an actor it's one of those things you, you you how can you turn it down you you know to get Spielberg on your CV is it's kind of cool. So you played in two uh, important movies about um, Irish history, mm -hmm. uh, Hunger, and uh, The Wind That Shake uh, the Valley. Mm -hmm. So what? Does uh, the Irish uh, history uh, represent for you as an actor? Does it, is it really important? Well, I think it's you know it, it's it's like anything you know if you've got especially young people you know if they're being taught history in school it can be it can be incredibly dry and you know and, and you know I'm learning this so I remember the dates and blah 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 so there's a separate there's a separation with students and teachers and history people because it's it's academic. But when you're, when you, with film, the difference with, with film is, is that you're putting a human face on this. You're putting the, the, the people, hopefully, um, it's a version of the truth, that you're putting a human face on these, on these, either these tragedies or these momentous occasions in, in history. Um, I think the, the first, the first thing you feel is a responsibility to tell the story properly, is, is that, um, is, is that you, um, you're completely aware of the importance of what you're doing. Because if it doesn't go well, nobody else gets the chance to do it. If somebody, if somebody you know, if we're successful, and it even makes money, and somebody else comes along and wants to tell a story, it's a little bit easier for them. So you've got that responsibility as well, and the history, and, and obviously the acting and the filmmaking. But to work with somebody so different than Steve McQueen, who did Hunger, and, Ken Loach, who did uh, Win the Shakes the Barley, they're two totally different individuals, but it was a joy. They're both artists, they're both incredibly different and uh, fantastic to work with. They're both, they, you know, they both love what they're doing. Like, it's in their bones, and, and you feed off that, you know, you, everybody feeds off it. And, and when you have great faith in, in a script, or no script with, with Ken, because I, I had no idea. We didn't get, I didn't get a script until a month after I'd finished film. Uh, I got pages here and there, but you didn't know what was going to happen. All the improvising, it's a wonderful way to work. And then with, with Steve, it's, it's um, um, his visual sense of storytelling is absolutely remarkable. He doesn't, he doesn't play by the rules at all. You know? I mean, look at the, the big scene with myself and Michael. It's seven, 17 and a half minutes before the, the first yeah. cut. And it's 22 and a half minutes long or something, someone told me. Um, and to, and t to, to br I mean, he's, he's breaking the rules of cinema. The whole point of it is cuts and different angles and, and telling a story that way. And he's gone, no, I want to hear what they're saying. Just turn the camera on and walk away. And you're just going to go, as a viewer, you're watching it. And after a couple of minutes, you go, I'm not going to cut this. <laughs> and then it goes on another two or three minutes and going, Am I missing something? It's not, and then, but what happens is because all you're presented with is two people, is that your ears focus in on what they're saying, and that's what he wanted to do. It wasn't with Steve. It wasn't even so much an artistic thing. It was he wanted people to concentrate on the story, um, and the way he did that was by not cutting, was making, was just concentrating on what was being said. So there's a simplicity to Steve that comes across as incredibly artistic, which he is. But he does it for very practical reasons. Um, it's like the scene a after the one with myself and Michael. I don't know if you remember, there's a guy sweeping the urine yeah, yeah. Down, down the corridor. I think that goes on for about nine minutes. And it's immediately after the scene, and you're kind of going, the balls of that. He's just had a big, long, fuck off, no cut, 22 minute dialogue scene. And then he goes to a completely, almost completely silent scene with one guy with a sweeping brush for nine minutes. I mean, any producer or editor would be going, what the fuck? It's, it's, <laughs> it, that's, you're, you're building a disaster. 
but when you see it put together and see the, the, the pace of the storytelling, that's, that's where his artistry lies. The fact that he has he's the balls to do something like that. And I said to him, I said, Why, how could you do that, to go straight to the sweep for nine minutes? And he said, well, it's, there's a kind of a hypnotic element to it. Uh, but he said, I wanted people to concentrate on what they just heard. So the long scene with myself, he wanted people to be able to watch this, be taken in and, and think about the world that they're, that they're in, not distracting with cuts and people banging through doors and blah, 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 distracting people. He actually wanted people to have a moment to, to run the ideas around in their head. And that's, that's why he did it, it's, which is, when you think about it, it's, it's really practical filmmaking, but on the screen, it's, it's incredibly artistic. And that, that's where his, I think that's where his, his genius is, you know. He did a, he, he likes his long takes, he did it on Shane as well. I haven't seen 12 years yet, I'm terrible. But uh, I've got to say it, yeah. But, but Shame is the same, just the kind of that feel of you're being allowed into something that you're not sh quite sure you should be seeing, but, but it's a worth seeing because it's going to make you, it's going to give you an opportunity to think. That's what he's clever at.